tech talk we'll be focusing on is a high level view of uh, what we call the um, penetration testing or, or for short pen test um, this might be a good um, it'll be a nice overview for a lot of people may not realize the security testing is a uh, pretty uh, pretty big issue um, and very important issue in the industry but it's often not seen because it's uh, uh, it's just not in in people's uh, <clears throat> people's um, front uh, the front front view. This is really a lot of times uh, security testing and uh, what happens with security is behind the scenes. Uh, I, oh, please, someone can someone mute, please. Thank you. So um, we're going to go over a few uh, examples of um, of security testing. Talk about what it is today, and uh, you know, and hopefully you'll learn a few things. It's a pretty short presentation, so we'll uh, hopefully leave room for discussion. Uh, there we go. So today we'll cover uh, talk about security attacks. They're really real. And what what I mean by that? And um, I know Tom will be the first one to uh, give some examples of that. As he we just came off his webinar about uh, how BI affects um, uh, data and needs to also be protected. So it's really across the industry. We'll talk about a little bit um, a process of what a hacker does. You know, and kind of get in the minds and of of what the approach is. Uh, we'll dive into what penetration testing is. And uh, specifically focus on uh, what that really means. And we'll, we'll speak a little bit about the process of that. We'll talk about the different types of pen tests, and then we'll wrap it up. So first off, um, they are real. Um, we don't see security issues unless, typically, unless they come out in the media, and that's usually at that point it's too late, right? Um, every company. If they have any kind of a uh, product deployment, they have an IT department has likely gone through some sort of a security um, assessment or breach, but there are a lot of companies that haven't. And uh, or if they have done an assessment, it's usually sometimes it's just not good enough because as much as there are developers out there making great code, there are also developers out there trying to break your code, and and that's why it's even more important that um, the testing side of things is always a pertinent piece of any any product or any company that needs to um, that it's you know, needs to uh, strengthen their their fortress here. So a couple examples that we've seen. I'm taking some of these slides from Tom's organization. We'll start with the Target one. As you guys remember, a year ago or about a year and a half ago, um, Target was uh, hit up to breach their, the credit card and all the com all the information that um, people had credit cards and files was leaked to the world. Very very big deal. CEOs got fired for this. And uh, certainly, they're still recovering uh, today. Just uh, from this issue, they had to, they lost a lot of money, and they had to uh, find ways to um, kind of re re repair the the faith of the target um, the target customers because of this uh, credit card breach. Over 70 million people were hit. But they were, um, they had a credit card file with Target. Sony was another company that was um, again a year ago. They uh, actually maybe half a year ago in December, where they were uh, hit up. Um, by the uh, whole information of the employees that were, that were uh, working for Sony Pictures Entertainment. You, if you guys may remember, this was right around the time where that movie was launched um, called The um, the Interview with uh, <coughs> Seth Rogen. And uh, they, uh, many believe was hacktivists had, um, had taken control of uh, Sony Pictures database and uh, got into their, um, their entire system just by cracking a password, and uh, was able to review just gigabytes and gigabytes of, of information on people's salary, where they live, people's medical records, everyone that worked there. It turned out to a point where Sony had to go dark uh, for a few weeks and work off of typewriters and telephones just to get, keep their uh, operation above. So, very, very real issue. <clears throat> More recently, uh, you guys have heard of Ashley Madison and the uh, in the site that um, you know where you can have you know uh, relationships online, um, they was a big hack there. Uh, they uh, certain folks, I'm not sure if they're called hackers or maybe just they're just hackers, uh, got into the site, uh, threatened to uh, they got again they took gigabytes of information of user data, people that actual real customers that have that have their information on file, real names, a lot of people like politicians and actors. And, Folks like that, and uh, threatened to release this information if uh, Ashley Madison wouldn't uh, would, would not shut down their site. And Ashley Madison didn't bite, and 
a couple months ago, they released all that information. So and now they're in a lot of trouble, and I think uh, I think also someone else got fired there as well. So <clears throat> and yesterday, <laughs> healthcare. We just learned about another uh, medical organization. This one is a smaller organization based out of New York called uh, uh, what is it called? The uh, Excellus. Excellus, which is a Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, firm. Uh, again, this here you have 10 million health records uh, uh, leaked. Um, it's not as a big breach as the uh, the Anthem uh, breach back in January, but certainly there's just been a series of medical records being um, hacked and released, and it's very very scary because it's it breaches all sorts of privacy and and uh, you know anybody has any kind of medical records in in those areas and those hospitals in those data, in those systems, I mean you're you're talking about people's lives so. So it's very real. Security is real, and um, testing is whether it's been tested or not. It's obviously it's not good enough because you still have these uh, critical issues. And um, yeah, there are a lot of folks out there who are willing to do harm and do damage to these companies just because they can. You know, there's a lot of this not really related to um, some kind of financial gain. It's just mostly they they can put a checkbox next to their their you know black hat record and say I, I did this, I hacked this. So. <clears throat> Not to scare all of you, let's talk about what goes in the mind of a hacker. So um, this is a very simple way to um, see how a hacker approaches the situation and uh, go from, from beginning to end. You know, this is uh, obviously I'm simplifying this whole process here, but if you uh, ever to wonder you know what what goes on how does it all work it all starts with really these five steps you know the first step starts with uh, reconnaissance really the this is the early stage um, this is reconnaissance is basically the the hackers scanning the victims and looking for ways to get into their system so think of a real world example if you're a if you're a burglar and you want to um, break into someone's house you're not going to go guns blazing rock throwing and crashing bricks into the window so you can get everything it's not like the movies you're probably going to be scoping out the wall the doors checking the locks see what windows are open with is the front door open you know being very quiet just walking around and scoping out the landscape checking for cameras right just looking around that's what reconnaissance is in in this that's what hackers do you know they they are setting up um, in this case the very first step they do is they look at your system and they try to do what they can to find what doors are open so uh, there are certain tools that hackers will do. Um, for, for example, they'll call. Uh, they'll do ping sweeps. They'll check out what machines are open. They'll look at. Um, <clears throat> they'll basically the whole goal is to map out the system, try to understand what devices are, what what machines are connected to what network. You know, uh, just doing quick pings. You know, ping www.qms.com. Is there a live ping coming back? What's the IP address of that? And eventually, you look for another hole. Is is there another uh, IP address associated with that with that address? And going from there. You're just doing little things like that. They call it ping sweeps. Another step they do is called DNS zone transfer. They kind of find out what machines are on the DNS server um, outside of the company's address range. You know, so let's say it's co-located on different sites. You can try to enter to that door. They'll do who is. They'll see who's on the who's on. It's who is is a very common administrative uh, term to see who's actually um, administrating or who's on the on the site. Um, you can query the internet interact NIC card for that for to find names and addresses, but the whole point is that um, you, the hacker sits there, pulls up their, you know, with just this to see what's on the network and uh, puts together all the information they can before he actually does, writes one line of code. So step two <coughs> is scanning. So now that they found an entry point and they found which, uh, <coughs> which uh, IPs are open, what ranges are in that, um, in that network, now what they want to do is they want to start scanning through um, the ports. So a very popular way of a um, popular way of a criminal would <coughs> would go about this is they use TCP and UDP type protocols to to search for the ports. So what does this mean? This means they essentially they're listening. They're sitting there listening to see which port will open up. And there's a lot of tools that do this. In fact, there's tools that do this today that isn't even considered hacking, where you just sit there and see what ports open. You know, if you ever it's uh, if you ever go to Starbucks and you sit there, you you know you can actually sit in there. You run these kind of port scanning tools. 
you can sit there on the network and just uh, run run a tool and wait until a port opens up because you know there, which is very scary if you're to coffee shops. So be careful if you are using their public internet, have a VPN or something set up. So the point here is that anybody can listen in. If a port opens up, then it's suddenly like, oh, I'm going to jump in there. It's like a crack, just a little crack in the door. They can enter that. So listening to ports is really the second second major step of what a hacker does. He's scanning, looking for ports. Now you can protect yourself by having firewalls set up, and you would have um, uh, redirections, but essentially a lot of companies don't do that, and especially on open internet um, guest networks. And uh, that's a very easy way for hackers to scan your ports. <clears throat> Third step is gaining access. So now that you scan the port, now you found the window, and you enter your, you can insert yourself. You basically have your foot in the door. So now you're inside the door. What are you going to do there? Well, there's a lot of things you can do there. Um, let's say I'm at Starbucks again and I'm uh, sitting next to you and you're on your laptop and you're not using any VPN software and I somehow scanned your port, got in and I, I am now sitting on, let's say, Tom's computer. <laughs> I like to use Tom's, so I'm going to use you. I'm watching Tom's. I'm watching all the traffic you're doing now. I'm looking at what you're doing. Wow, I can do a lot of things now. There are certain ways where now the real danger is I want to learn more about Tom. And I can read, uh, what can I do to get through, um, I can get some, some, some of the different ways the hackers would do is they will actually initiate uh, activity for you to uh, to to hit hit up on, so I can chase you. For example, uh, phishing scams. So that's one way to do it. Like uh, I can uh, I can send you a link, uh, even on my computer. I can send you a link through email, and uh, you know you've seen phishing essentially is a ch is a link for people to click on a website saying, hey, click on this, and you'll go to this site, and you think you're on maybe um, a Disney.com, but you're really on Disney.xxx, and it will take you somewhere. And all of a sudden, every any, any information you put in there, login, password, data, is now sitting on my computer. Buffer overflow is another way. Um, this is uh, essentially <coughs> it, it's essentially a way of uh, uh, using web forms. A lot of times, um, uh, uh, hackers would say, let's say you're on a website and uh, you're you're about to fill out, they say, an application form. Well, uh, what they can do is they can actually implement some some uh, some really malicious code in the form so that when you're entering a certain field it actually redirects that data so let's take for example uh, you're entering Tom's entering his uh, his home address right and you can and we get to the he gets to the field where it's a zip code you are you filling out a five digit zip code well I can make the form you know expect say nine characters instead of five right because that's and those last four characters can actually be uh, a, a, a buffer overflow that actually allow you to open up a, a window in your in your uh, in your account, which is uh, so when you log in, all of a sudden I know much about you. So it's really really scary because you don't know that as a user, but you know as a web form, it's they have ways to just steal your data just by entering a couple extra characters that you may not even realize. Password hacking, it's a very common one. Um, that's essentially looking at the first thing they do is crack into your computer is to listen to what's open. Um, there's many ways. Um, there. Are, Folks that don't, companies don't necessarily arm themselves with strong passwords. You guys heard that more than once, right? The default password on a router is admin, admin. You know, you'd be surprised how many people don't change that. <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, things like that where if I can get in your router, all of a sudden I have full control of everything. I can control where your IPs are. I can trade your range. I can control anything. I can control your password. So it's, and I can change it, right? You know, so routers, modems, computers, those are all very easy to hack. That's why they always emphasize strong passwords, and that's why you guys always see notes here in Bullhorn asking you to change your password for your email address because exactly for those reasons. <clears throat> click jacking. This is a uh, click jacking is a way of uh, basically uh, stealing your clicks. You know, again, uh, if you are on a website and um, you you click on a certain link, what I do is I steal your click and I redirect you to another page. You may not even realize you're on another page. Right, everything may look like that exact page, but it actually is another site. And now you've entered my domain, and I can do anything I want with you, and you still think you're on your domain. And a lot of people fall for that, and you know it's it's uh, it's gotten smarter too. Actually, in the past, it was pretty yeah. obvious. These uh, addresses very there's <laughs> like something something dot like Africa <laughs> or some Romania site, but they've actually gotten smarter and started using RESTful APIs. Really start start uh, uh, even mimicking the, uh, the URL holds address. So, you know, click checking is very, very dangerous. Uh, a lot of do is uh, hidden, what they have is hidden websites that show up when you're clicking on something and they do a lot of malicious activities, uh, but certainly very, very important to, um, uh, for a hacker to get in. Uh, 
So gaining access, once they can get in, they, they have you do certain wi wi uh, certain activities. They're now fully in invested in your system. So now I'm sitting on Tom's system. I have all this data. I know everything about Tom, where he lives, you know what he what he likes to look at, what kind of drinks he you know buys at uh, Starbucks. What do I do now? Oh, this is where it gets really interesting, right? So <laughs> they can uh, I can do a ton of things. I can do I can um I can I can suddenly put files on your system, right? Or you can do it yourself. You can download free software, for example, like uh, which a lot of sites still do. You click on this, you'll you'll need this plugin to run this web page, and et cetera. Wow, those things are full of malware and viruses, you know. And so I always check your system and check your uh because they what they do is they just insert themselves, execute in, instruction code, and essentially do they can wipe your entire your system. By the way, I'm not just talking about a a user computer, right? Imagine this on an enterprise level, right? <clears throat> Fault injection, which is another uh, term for fuzzing, it's a, is another uh, uh, term that basically uh, tries to crash your code, tries to crash your system. Once I once I can uh, put put um, uh, an execution item on your on your machine, I can do anything I want with it. I can uh, wipe out your file system. I can you know crash your computer. There is a lot of things I can wipe your database, right? I can inject my own data into your. I can mess with you know the the the, the presidential candidate votes, whatever I want to do. As soon as I get into your system, it's 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 uh, I can go to town on it. So very by the time you hit step four, you're probably in trouble. Okay. And then lastly, the last step is clearing tracks. And as a, and any hacker that gets into your system and does this damage <clears throat> is going to leave your system and just the way it was, so you don't notice anything. Just like a you know the smart burglars will, will come in your house, steal all your stuff. They won't ransack and throw trap throw cups and you know, TVs around. They're just gonna take what they walk and walk out quietly, close the door, and and escape, so that you don't notice anything different. Same thing for a um, a hacker here. They're gonna walk in there. They're gonna wipe all their logs. They're gonna they're after they do everything. They're gonna wipe, delete all their directories that they they implemented. They're gonna have self cleanup scripts. You will never know what's going on until it's too late. Until the, you saw those stories about the all the you know. By the time you find out where it is, they've already moved on and changed IPs and moved to the next uh, site. So. Very, very dangerous stuff, but it's certainly uh, this is a quick summary of how hackers work. Hey, Tom, can I make a quick comment on this one? Yeah. Um, the average, 70% of cases, the time from stage two to stage three is measured in hours. And about 68% of the time, the amount of time it takes for a company to detect it's been hacked is measured in months. So there's this huge window when somebody gains access and a company knows nothing about it, and that's that's where the the danger sits. It's crazy, it's crazy, and like again, it's not like there's alarms going off and everything, right? These guys are just doing it quietly, walking out. Yeah. So yeah, and by the time they figure out the the, the solution and the fix for it, like you said, it's already too late. It's just months later. <clears throat> Any questions on the process of hackers, with how they think and how they operate? Okay, so where's our white knights? So enters, uh, here comes the penetration testing. By the way, this is just one aspect of, um, of protection. It's not, there's a lot of other ways. There's security testing, there's audit testing, there's a ton of other types of testing. Today we're just focusing on what they call penetration testing or, or pen test. So by definition um, from Wikipedia, I took uh, a pen test is a software attack on a computer system that looks for security weaknesses, potentially gaining access to the computer's features and data exactly what we talked about, right? Everything that we did in the process of the hacker, we need people to, to, to hopefully get a step like these guys, uh, get ahead of the game and, and um, think like them. So that's really what penetration testers are actually. Uh, main objective there is, um, is to determine security weaknesses, right? Pen tests can also be used to test an organizational security policy compliance. They'll check its employees of security awareness and the organization's ability to identify and respond to security incidents. And by the way, a lot of times it Keep in mind, hackers aren't always outside. You know, let me, it's easy to think like this. There's a, a hackers are the guys that wear these masks from from you know from uh, I know what you did last summer and and walk around with uh, evil computers and wear dress all black. No, they could be actually your internal folks working in your system that is careless and didn't actually forgot to lock their password on their spreadsheet and someone else can get in. So it's very and sometimes you have hackers internally. That want to get data because they're disgruntled from other people. So it's it can be both internal and external. But as long as there's a there's a hole and there's a flaw in the system, 
you know, anybody that knows what they're doing can get into the system. In fact, the internal folks are probably even more scarier because they, they are behind the firewall. <clears throat> now, why are pen tests important? Well, there's four reasons I think of. Number one, they give you security personnel real experience when dealing with intrusion. So you should a penetration test should, should be done without informing the staff, right? You don't want to tell everyone in the company that, hey, we're going to run a penetration test today. Everyone sit back and, and keep your eye on things. No, you, then you're gonna you're not gonna be you know it's just like a fire drill. You pull a drill when you run a drill unexpectedly and ready to go when uh, no one's expecting it most, right? So you, you think Ashley Madison or, or healthcare companies, if they knew uh, the uh, that a, uh, a hack was coming, that they would be uh, they would sit around and do nothing? Of course not. You know you hit them when you're when you're most quiet, not expecting it, and that's what happens. With, and so penetration tests should be the same way. You want to hit these tests out there. Uh, when there's no, um, when everything almost seems to be flowing well, right? It also gives a chance for an organization to test whether security policies are in, in effect. Right? You want to make sure, to, just like a fire drill, do we have the, um, do we have the route ready? Do we have the, uh, the, the, the whoever captains are, the direct team, the, the people outside? Um, do we have a drill? Do we have process? Are the trucks coming on time, et cetera? You got you security policies are the same way, right, for every company. They have to practice these things. Number two, it can uncover aspects of security policy or lack. Oh, I just said that. I guess you know you want to you want to find holes. Um, you know, like, oh, we forgot to secure this set of network ranges. You know, you run a penetration test, you will uncover those things. So you basically give yourself a practice, and then you can go and do better and fix fix the holes. Just like anything that has bugs, so does security policy. Uh, number three, they're important because you provide feedback on the most at risk routes into a company or application. So penetration testers, they think outside the box, right? They're testers. At the end of the day, they are QA folks. They're tester folks, and they, they do think of ways that um, to get into your system that you necessarily wouldn't be super clear on or not very obvious on. So they run tests just like a t tester would run against a, uh, a product. Um, they consider real-world scenarios. And then the reports they generate by the penetration test will provide you feedback on prioritizing what future security investments are. So it's um, it's certainly very useful because it tells you um, where, where you need the most help and where you don't. And then lastly, they're important because reports can be used to help train developers and make fewer mistakes because we developers, they don't al always think security. In fact, a lot of them only think I'm going to add this feature and implement. They don't even think testing a lot of times I've worked with. But a penetration tester is just like a regular tester, right? I found a bug in a system. I found them issues that need to be resolved, and um, here, developer, you broke something this way, but you broke something in a way that it broke security, and uh, in your application, here's a, here's a way you can make it stronger. Um, one example is, um, think mobile. <laughs> mobile, mobile. if you, um, mobile, you, you, it's, if you install an application, it's not like a computer where you have a disk drive and you can uh, pull in and out CDs and all that, right? But uh, a, mobile, a mobile device, has a real file system and has storage and it has access to all the applications through different um, through different permissions. So if a developer writes an application and it opens up a hole to another application, let's say for example you wrote a third-party camera app, right? And your camera app asks for permissions to view your um, your contacts list. And let's say I decide I don't want that to happen. I don't want this camera seeing my contact list on my phone. Well, that's a security flaw if it's still exposed as a contact list because it suddenly opens up a directory where a lot of my personal information on the phone is that's no longer sandbox. So it's uh, those are kind of tests that a penetration test would be um, where, where you could potentially uh, exploit my camera app application and, and get into my contacts list through this camera application if you don't plug that security hole. So penetration test does test the application, gives information to developers so they can do a better job fixing their mistakes. Let's talk a little bit about the process here, and uh, and I'm almost done here. The process here is very similar to what we talked about in the process of the hacker. You know, in fact, um, if you just look at the uh, the map here, it's very simple. Planning, let's plan, with, let's get started, let's figure out the discovery attack, and then report back. Right, very very standard. Really, the the things that jump out to me the most on this page is really these three bullet points: reconnaissance, scanning, and enumerating. I mean. We just talked about that. Reconnaissance, just like a hacker, the penetration tester should be collecting information about their, um, about their firewall. 
firewall, look at the ranges, look at the holes, what our entry points are, where the VPNs are, you know, uh, can I enter from inside or outside the firewall, how do I get in there? You know, do the research, figure out where the holes are, because that's where reconnaissance, just like a hacker would be, you want your penetration testers all to be thinking the same. <laughs> Port scanning, same thing, right? We talked about hacker, now that we, I'm listening to who's open, where, where, which ports open up so I can jump in as soon as uh, that wave comes in, I'm gonna hop that wave. Same, just like a penetration tester. You want to scan the ports, you want to check TCP UDP ports, you want to, once you find IP addresses of a target organization and the footprint, you have to map and network out, use automatic port scanners, a lot of tools like Nmap and such to, uh, that the hackers would use that a penetration tester could also be useful for. So getting the research there um, is certainly important, right? That's, that's a, a scanning the ports, just like a, 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 a hacker would be. And then lastly, enumerating, step three, right? Once you once you once you've decided um, where the ports are, start narrowing down where you're, what what areas you're going to protect, what machines, what accounts, which ranges of IPs, um, you know, and there's you know what types of permissions to lock down, you know, if I hack that permission, those ports, do I do I see um can I get in there just like a hacker would? You're doing essentially what a hacker would, and that's why it, um, a lot of times we'll see soon uh, uh, security testers actually are called are actually are hackers. You know, and there's a term for that, and we'll get in a second. But essentially, this whole process here is actually maps very similar to what a what a, um, um, a hacker would do. And uh, except instead, you're basically tracing the route, and then you're you're finding ways to protect it by writing tests, and then get reporting back the results. So the types of pen tests out there, um, what are there's a handful of them. I mean, first off, um, penetration testers use a combination of uh, manual and automated tests. They test things by hand. They do. They do, um, but they also run automation to check some of the ports and scan. So just like in, you know, the skill sets of a of a of a penetration tester are very QA centric. You have black box. You have gray box. You have white box execution. You know, just but their focus is primarily to find holes in in the application code versus you know, right, finding a bug in a functional code like a like a normal uh, functional tester would be, right? <clears throat> Um, the external, internal, I talked about external and internal users being really the types of folks that are going to be part of the testing, right? Either you test it from outside the network or you test it internally. And there's a whole bunch of these different types of tests that you can execute on for, that are narrowed down. Network service test, client side testing, web application. I won't, I won't go through all these definitions for a matter of time, but, you know, there certainly are a lot of different types of tests that um, internal and external users can run as part of the process. Um, Type testing frequently is actually very common. It's actually very needed. We, we didn't talk about that, but um, you, you don't necessarily run these tests every day, but you also don't run these tests, you know, once, right? Network changes, off, the infrastructure changes all the time, security patches get applied, you know, uh, people move offices, they go to a new location, the network's set up differently, end user policies get modified. There's a lot of things involved that could potentially outdate your, your test if you ran it before. So having having the opportunity to run these often and frequently are and um, and use in in a way that you're constantly checking the network and reporting if there's any holes is really important and then lastly the types of people that are classified as um, penetration testers other than the penetration tester title you'll see uh, terms like certified certified ethical hackers white or gray hat hackers black hat is usually the hackers that do the bad things whereas white and gray hat they'll do the bad things, but they'll report it, you know, in a, um, so you can do something about it. <laughs> and even security test engineers. Okay. And then in conclusion, um, you know, companies need to invest in security protection, right? They this is a bigger this is a big deal. You know, they just like they're going to invest in uh, creating new features and and uh, and building a mobile operation or something like that. They need to invest in protecting their company with through security. So that means they hire white hat hackers. That means they uh, get the security engineers to, to really beef up their uh, code. They have to actually spend and invest time in making sure their code is um, not just writing new features, but actually making sure they're bulletproof. Know the path of the hacker. We talked about that whole cycle there. Uh, understanding your goals of the pen test. You know, once you know the path and go ahead and what, what goals do you set. Hire the right talent, um, the, the different types of engineers out there. And then lastly, set up the right scope environment, right? You want to limit access, define the ranges, and then schedule times to do the test. You know, also, obviously, you don't want to do your, your network testing at like 3 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon, which would be really busy. You probably want to wait till after hours so that when the service is down, so you don't affect anything. So just like a performance test. 
Okay, I'm out of time. Uh, no, any questions out there for anyone? Well, it was pretty heavy hey, stuff, but go ahead. Hey, Tony, it's Kim. Um, when I, in a previous life, at least here on the East Coast, um, the web application penetration testers were is a difficult skill set to find, and then a lot of clients were looking for the GIAC, the CWAP certification. And it just seemed like it was a really highly specialized skill set. Like they had to be both a developer as well as having testing experience. Is that accurate? Uh, yes, yes. They, uh, security testers, white hat testers, ethical hackers. They are um, they are much more of a, a niche and a skill and a skilled area. You don't you don't find people out of school learning this stuff. You know they typically um, typically folks like this have have uh, developed a curious sense of security and they care about security on a personal level like they're paranoid you know they're they're probably not on Facebook or any social media or they are they have tons of firewalls up, set up in VPNs but bottom line is uh, it takes a type of talent and a type of skills and, and a personality to be in this field and secondly it's a very it's almost a research level too you know it's just like a performance sensors are probably the same category they they are specialized they use special tools that no one else has really used unless they're in a certain area um, there is a there is a nice market for these folks. Um, there's a lot of major conferences. Uh, Black Hat is probably the biggest one every year um, out there, and Black Hat DEF CON, where they bring even CIA and NSA folks um, uh, together to talk about um, security, um, white hat type of issues like this. Uh, but it's it's not something you would just walk up to a college campus and say, oh, "Have you done any security testing?" You're probably going to be. Um, it is a specialized area, so. Uh, which means if you find positions like that, you know they do command a higher salary, and a lot of folks are there are a lot of consultants also. Actually, there's a lot of consultants that do uh, security assessments. Uh, there are there are consulting firms that do security assessments, specialize only in this. Um, it's a very special area that um, can be done in niche as well. And by the way, Q analysts, we do do we do have security testers that are um, that are in uh, in our in our um, line of business. So. So certainly is, yeah. Hope that answers your question. You just that was that was my next question, but you just answered it. Thanks. Okay. All right. One or two more questions. Just Tony, uh, how much uh, vulnerability assessment is different from penetration penetration testing? Uh, I'm sorry. What, what? Can you say that again? Vulnerability assessment. How much it is different from penetration testing? Did you say web compatibility? Vulnerability. Oh, vulnerability. Oh, okay. Um, well, it's it's not, not too far off. I mean, uh, a web application. Um, I, I would say a penetration tester probably looks at they typically they they uh, they you know they run through that process um, of uh, let's see where it's back to that. They go through the the overall right the reconnaissance, scanning, enumerates. They look at the network a little bit more. Um, vulnerabilities. You kind of already know what's out there. You kind of know what issues are. Mm -hmm. that you're just trying to attack them, right? You, you already know what are the are, are the viruses, where the malware. You know what the cross-site scripting issues are, um, and then you just you know you work with testing a patch or something around that. So it's kind of a little bit more focused on vulnerabilities because they're they're known issues. Whereas uh, the true hackers out there, they they create the vulnerabilities, right? They're probably creating them before you even know about them. And then uh, you, what you want to do as a penetration tester is kind of understand the, the larger system at, at scope first. Protect your system before these vulnerabilities come in, whereas a vulnerability tester already knows about it and works with the developer on fixing and, and testing that particular patch. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. One more question from anyone? Tony, from a business development standpoint, uh, how would you gin up a uh, conversation? Uh, Center in this area with uh, our prospective customers, and uh, I think Bob is on, on the call, and I'm not expecting Bob to, to, to say anything, but maybe for his ears and everyone else's, it's 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 topical, right? It's it's something that's a icebreaker conversation starter. Do you, what's, what's your view on the value of this uh, understanding that you're helping us gain in the context of the business development meeting? How relevant? I would say this is not relevant as in the intro meeting type of level, unless you're talking to a company that specifically is looking to uh, for um, to shop around 
you know, uh, security vulnerability, you know, uh, protection. Uh, but like let's say we're talking to a company that does that makes mobile apps or another company that is investing in, uh, you know, uh, just bettering their, you know, their financial system or, or you know, it, it's really, um, they, everyone should be thinking about this, but this is one of those elephant in the room things. No one wants to come out and say, you know, like, we, uh, unless they can brag about our security system is flawless and bulletproofless, and most companies are not going to want to uh, address, you know, like, oh, do you have any security flaws in your in your code? And I, uh, no, because we're very smart developers and we protect everything. That's kind of the ego thing. Um, but as a QA person, you know, as a as a as an area, if we want to come across as a company um, giving a perspective that we are, um, you know, we're more than just we'll help you, uh, you know develop some testing on your application and watch it go out so you know maybe a hundred people would would download that game and play with it right we really want we, but instead we're coming we want to we want to be positioned ourselves is that hey we know we, we we are knowledgeable about your industry we know knowledgeable about um, in addition to um, whether you can you, you have good quality products or not there is this aspect of performance and this aspect of security that how, hey, have you guys thought about this stuff? And have you have you have do you have a department that works on it? Because I'm very curious to to know if you guys have a strategy in place and and if uh, you're putting together um, the right strategy. Um, and they may say, well, you know, no, we don't have we don't have something we don't have any, we haven't spent much time thinking about security testing because we're too focused on uh, shipping the next feature just to stay up to you know up to speed with say Candy Crush. Well, you know that's not true because you 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 don't want to have an application that opens holes and then get Get killed for it and be one of these these uh, breached uh, corp, uh, corporations because it's too late. So you know we we want to make ourselves you know put ourselves in a place where uh, we understand a big big scope. You know we understand the full scope of testing, which involves security and performance as well as the functional side of things, the obvious stuff. You know same for the BI stuff, right? I mean he Tom talked about using BI as data security and um and how to protect that. And that's it's a different it's a not a very well known concept, but you know it. But if you think about the um, the gist of it all, if you're not testing at the core of the code and you're and you're leaving holes open, someone could really mess with it. And um, as an organization, as a quality focused organization, we care about those kind of things, and and we certainly um, uh, want to make sure we have that conversation with you guys. That's uh, it's good insights, Tony. Uh, Seems like having this in our hip pocket, though, under any circumstances, would be uh, would be nice to sort of uh, be ready, to kind of at least peripherally have a discussion about. Yeah, that, that, was, that was good insight, and uh, looking forward to really getting into it a lot uh, more in depth in the next couple of weeks. Awesome, great. Looking forward to that too. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for everyone for your time, and uh, we're over time. Uh, this recording will be saved and uploaded to our YouTube channel. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Tony. Well done, Tony. Bye, Tony. Bye.